Right, question 11, which is on the binomial expansion. So it says use the binomial expansion to show that the square root of 1 plus 4x over 1 minus x is approximately equal to that. So there we can see we've got a product of two different binomial expansions. It looks like a fraction, but it can actually be written as a product. So part A, we can actually rewrite that as, and we know that thirds split up like this, root of 1 plus 4x over root of 1 minus x, which is actually equal to 1 plus 4x to the power of a half, not divided by, but we're going to write as a product, times 1 minus x, and the reciprocal of the square root of something, which is what that is, it's the reciprocal of a square root, is actually a power of minus 1 half, as you should know from the first year, thirds and indices. So we're going to work with those two expansions now. So we're going to expand each of them. So we'll do this in two separate parts. We'll start off, and let's clearly label this one as part A. And we'll clearly label our own part B as well. So our A, so 1 plus 4x to the power of a half. And what we need to do now is consult our formula booklet, because the formula for the binomial expansion is actually in there. So as I've said in previous videos, if you attempt to do any questions without the formula booklet to one side when you're revising A-level maths, you're being a bit daft. What you need is that formula booklet to one side at all times, because if you get stuck, there's probably a, a formula in there that you can use. So there's the formula booklet there. So we're going to look for the relevant formula. So contents there, it's the A-level maths, and pure maths, so question, uh, page five that we're looking at. Three, four, five, so it should be somewhere here. There it is there. So we we'll zoom into that. And let's just put it here to remind us of the formula. Obviously, you'll be able to see it next to you in the exam because you have the formula booklet open. Right, so 1 plus 4x. And notice that the 4x replaces the x in this formula. So we've got, just regurgitating this formula here, equals 1 plus n, which is a half. And the x term, which is 4x, not x, plus n, n minus 1, the x term squared, over 1 times 2 over 2 factorial. And notice that this one here only goes up to x squared, so that's where we can stop. So let's simplify these now. So my preferred way of simplifying these is to first of all decide whether the term is going to be positive or negative by counting the number of minus signs. So here, we've got 1 plus, and there's no minus signs, a half times 4 is 2x. So here we've got 1 minus sign now, there it is there. So that means we're going to have a minus. Now the way I type in the calculator is just type the numbers without any pluses or minuses now. So 1 half times 1 half times 4 squared divided by 2 factorial. There we go. Which is 2 minus 2x squared. So now for our what we deem to be our part b. So 1 minus x to the power of minus 1 half. So looking at the formula again, we've got 1 plus n, which is minus 1 half x which isn't x here, be careful, it's minus x, minus x, then we've got plus n, n minus 1, x term, which is minus x squared, over 2 factorial, so equals 1 plus Count the minus signs, we've got one, two minus signs there, so plus one half x. And again, count the minus signs. Be careful here though, because there's a square bracket, so we've got one, two, three, then we double count this because the square bracket four, so fourth one there. One, two, three, four minus signs. So then the calculator, let's just type it in. We decided that was a plus, by the way, four minus signs, so let's type it in. So 1 half times 3 over 2 
times 1 squared, which we'll learn by the typing, divided by 2 factorial, which is 3 eighths. So plus 3 eighths x squared. And really, to be completely mathematically correct, for this equal sign to work, we should really say, and so on. Right, so now we're going to times them together. We're doing a times b. So a times b equals 1 plus 2x minus 2x squared times 1 plus 1 half x plus 3 eighths x squared and so on approximately equal to because now we're going to ignore terms that are x cubed and above as we were advised to do in the question this one only goes up oops, sorry this one here only goes up to the x squared term so the approximately equal sign covers that okay so we've got one plus a half x plus 3 eighths x squared get rid of those then we've got then we've got 2x times 1 which is positive 2x plus 2x then 2x times a half x which is positive x squared then finally minus 2x squared times 1 is minus 2x squared and any other multiplications we do any further multiplying out will result in terms bigger than x cubed which we don't want so we're left with all the things we need to simplify now so simplifying all that we've got that that line is equal to and notice this was approximately equal to well this certainly was approximately equal to that but this line now is now going to be equal to that so just a small notational point there that's why i'm using the equal sign so we've got one then two x uh, add one half x well we've used the one we're about to do this so that's five over two x and then we've got three eighths plus one x squared take two x squared so let's do that in the calculator three eighths plus one take two is minus five eighths x squared and let's just check that that's equal to what we said it was going to be equal to yes it certainly is okay so therefore we know we've got that right so now looking to the next part of the question, it says part B, give a reason why the student should not use x equals one half. Now the key to this is to look at the domain of validity for each of these two binomial expansions. Okay, so part B. So we have the, dom we have the expansion one plus four x to the power of one half. Now that's valid. when mod of 4x is less than 1 or when 4 mod x is less than 1 what I did there that separates to mod 4 mod x however mod 4 is just 4 which means that mod x has to be less than a quarter for that to work so I don't need to continue anymore. I know for that expansion to work, it only works for mod x less than a quarter. But here in the question, it's telling us why you should not use x equals a half. So we've got one half is greater than a quarter, therefore not valid. And that's part B answered. Now part C, it says substitute x equals 11 into that to find an approximation to, uh, to root six. So let's copy that down, just so we remember it. So x equals an 11th, pop that there. Well on this one, and I think this is good notation to use, the left hand side equals square root of one plus four lots of an 11th over 1 minus 1 11th so let's type that in the calculator so square root fraction 1 
plus four lots of an eleventh. Over one minus one eleventh equals root six over two equals root six over two. And we can see now from the question where our root six comes from. The right hand side equals. So the way I like to sub these into the left hand uh, to the right hand side rather, what I'm going to do is type the calculator one eleventh, then press equals. So that's now stored in the answer button. So if I go back up to my expression there, there it is there, my approximation, 1 plus 5 over 2, x, which is stored in the answer button, take 5 eighths, x squared, and that just saves a few button pushes, so that's equal to 1183 over 968. So we've got the right hand side equals, and let's just make the effort to write down the working, 5 over 2, 1 eleventh, plus, sorry, minus 5 over 8, 1 eleventh squared, which is equal to, and we said it was 1183 over 968, 1183 over 968. So that means that root 6 over 2 is approximately equal to our approximated expression 1183 over 968. So times in both sides by 2, that implies that root 6 is approximately equal to that times 2. 1183 over 484. And let's see, remind ourselves whether the question asks for any particular number of significant figures. No, give your answer as a fraction in simplest form which we can see is what we've done here. Therefore, we're done. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.